Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilson at art to life and I want to talk today a little bit about the abstraction of realism or bringing an abstract quality to, realis to realism, to realistic work. I'm standing next to a painting. I, make, I used to make work like this. I used to have these realistic elements in it. And I don't think, I'm not saying this is a great example of this, but it's where I learned, it, on this painting in particular, an interesting aspect of painting realistic. On this picture, I remember painting this bird and, and it just, it wasn't that interesting. And, but when I covered it up and I sanded it and I threw paint on top of this bird, it suddenly felt, uh, it just looked better. And in a way it looked more realistic. And it got me to realizing that, you know, when you, when you, you have the, there's a magic that happens when you paint something three dimensional in the world and it looks realistic because there's it's two dimensional but you make it look three dimensional but i've realized that in in my sort of experimentation in learning this i these ideas that when i when i had both when i made my work that was realistic look um, and reference the two-dimensional aspect, the materials, like for example, you can feel the materials in this, that is, it is also showing us that this is flat and that there's surface and it's paint. You can feel the materials quite strongly and it looks like a bird. You get kind of a two for one thing happening. And this kind of realistic work, you see this with like really loose painting uh, landscapes, amazing. Uh, that you, there's a plastic quality, there's a, the, the oil paint and the way the paint's dripping feels like oil paint, but then it also, you get this other aspect that it looks like a place, it looks like a landscape. So you've taken life and you've shown it with these art materials, but you're not trying to hide the art materials necessarily, but they're there also as a difference. We're getting the difference of we know this is we know what a real bird looks like but then we also get the difference of a real bird made with materials made with art materials plastic that creates interest and excitement and it's a whole approach to making something look realistic because there can be more emotion in that, in a way, there's more room for that. There's more room for, your, for yourself to choose those colors and let the materials be themselves. The picture sometimes can feel bigger and richer than the actual thing you're painting. Um, so that's what was exciting for me here. When you have things, aspects of your work that are from life, like depth, um, we have this black line going in front of something, like in like a telephone wire in front of a house, it pushes things back. There's a real space that's created in this picture. It's referencing life. It's, that's how space works. That's how we know things are behind other things because things are in front of other things. So even though this is an, there's an abstract quality to this, it's using realistic elements. Playing both of those off of each other is an exciting difference. And so there's just a couple of things I wanted to, things that I learned and, and that helped me that, that might help you in this, because I'm not really doing this so much in my work. Now I've opted to, uh, I'm not painting realistic things, but I'm using realism, depth, and all kinds of things that, the emotions that feel and give uh, a richness to, to the work. But the first thing is just remembering that there's a life and a realism to the materials you're using and to let that show. If we try to control the hell out of every single thing so we don't even know, we don't even notice the materials. Now, of course you can do that. These are just my ideas. It's not a judgment. But when the materials, the oil paint can show itself and the drips can be even in there, but then it can also, uh, represent something else you're you're you've got a foot in both worlds and it's really exciting and really interesting and this is kind of tricky to get but that's that's something to kind of remember to just let those materials don't 
force them so much. Let them be themselves. It's almost like when you get frustrated and you cover your painting or you, or you take a, um, you know, a paper towel and you put or a piece of paper with paint on it and you just dab it on your painting. That always has a freshness because the paint's just being itself. And so the second, the second thing is to remember that there's showing the difference between reality and, and, and the reality of art. Like art materials showing reality and reality is a powerful difference. And if you can pull that off, it's something to really, really shoot for. And then the, the, third, the third piece of this is um, if you can choose what it is about the, the real thing that you're painting, if you can check in with what it is you want to showcase, what it is you want to show, what you're emotionally connecting with, and think of that when you're showing it, the work will have more feeling and the landscape or the scene or the object will and be imbued with you more than it would if, it, if someone just came across it. That's why when we see amazing landscape paintings of places that we've been, the places that we've been, the, the, the landscapes that have been, these famous landscapes are more like the landscapes than the actual place. That's how powerful it is. We're optimizing it. We're, we're an optimizer. We're taking something and making it even more than it is if we get this and we can understand that. So that's a couple, three ideas that, things that I like to try to think about that can help with this. So, in, in, and it's kind of understanding the abstract qualities of realism. And so let me know if, I know a lot of you work this way and it's really, it's a really cool thing to get your head around. I'd love to hear your feedback, if you even understand what I'm talking about, but also how you do it in your work. Um, and please, so go ahead and leave a comment below. I'd love, love to hear um, your thoughts on this. This is just how I got this in my head. Um, it's super interesting to me. We're going to be talking about this at the Kitchen Table Art Project as, as well. You know, how do you bring, um, how, do you, how does the abstraction of realism make it feel more real? So that's what we're going to be talking about. We've got some amazing people coming on who are going to be sharing this and showing how they do exactly this. Um, so check that out. That's Wednesday, this coming up, Wednesday coming up at 12 to 1.30 p.m. PDT. So um, leave a comment below and uh, come and join us on Wednesday and make some art and uh, we'll talk about this. Okay, thanks a lot. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.